What's up, taters? This is Tree from TreeofLogic.com, and welcome to my channel, Just Tree 411 So I am going to go over some hardcore facts and receipts. I'm also going to give you the timeline. You're going to love this video. You're going to want to share this video, and you're going to want to bookmark this video because this is going to put an end to their lives once and for all. Andrew and Rachel has been spending the last entire, the last week, as a matter of fact, whitewashing their past, whitewashing their evil deeds. Brittany and I are the only ones providing receipts while all, the only thing that Andrew and Rachel are providing is lip service. They do not debunk what we have basically pre presented as evidence. They don't debunk it with anything. They just go, that's not true. This is not false. That's not true. And receipts keep coming out showing that they're lying so my question is once I show you all the timeline and once I show you all the hardcore receipts my question is is that why are we the only ones that are expected to show evidence and these two clowns don't have to show nothing the only thing they can say is nanny boo boo that's not true no make them accountable if anything that i said or anything that britney said is not true they need to come up with actual evidence and not just say no it's not true i am the queen of receipts and you're gonna see why i don't play with these people and i don't play with anyone if i said you did something you could put your money on me baby i come with facts and you're about to see how i get down so let's go ahead and get started but before i do okay i need to give a Big shout out to Thoughts and Players. Let me tell you something. Thoughts and Players is one of the best investigators we have out here. And I am so glad that they were helping me. I feel so sorry because uh, they were with me for five hours and it wasn't until we finished the timeline. We didn't finish the timeline until like uh, 6 15 in the morning. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Look at this right here, right? Look, <laughs> look at. The entire timeline that it took for us. And by the way, what you're looking at right now, that took five and a half hours. And we didn't finish until 6.15 in the morning. And that's when I decided to go ahead and put the, vi uh, the videos together. So once again, shout out to Thoughts and Players. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much for helping me out. I could not have done this without you. So let's begin. So when it comes to Rachel's timeline, we're going to go by baby daddy one, baby daddy two, and baby daddy three. Now we understand that she's been married twice and I am naming names. So I'm going to put the names with the baby daddies so that you can understand and keep track because when we just keep when Brittany and I just keep saying baby daddy one baby daddy two it's confusing these are adults we will conceal the names of the children but there's no need for us to conceal the names of the adults they are public and basically I'm just going to give the first name and not the last name so let's talk about the boyfriend and that's baby daddy number one and his name is Chad last name starts with H so they started dating in 1997 and then they moved in together in 1998 in the year 2000, that's when Rachel got pregnant and she was 20 years old. Don't worry, I'm going to show the receipts right after I give you the timeline. But I want to give you the timeline and then I'm going to show you the receipts to back everything I'm saying in the timeline. Okay, so here we go. In the year 2000, that's when Rachel, at the age of 20, she got pregnant. They were not married. They were living together. Okay, and that's when she had her first child. She gave birth to the first child. It's a daughter. And the initials of the first daughter is I, last name, begins with H. And Rachel was 21 years old when that happened. In 2003, that's when Rachel, she was 23 at the time, gave birth to her second daughter, still not married to Chad. Her and Chad were living together at the time. And by the year 2003, that's when Chad caught Rachel cheating and he left her. He left her with the two baby daughters. That was, it looked like about a year and a half apart. So she gave birth to, H, to IH in 2001 and to JH in 2003. That was the second daughter. All right. So let's go to the receipts. 
Here is her blog that is on her Patreon. We also have it indexed. We also have it archived. We also have it bookmarked. So I want to show you how I was able to calculate all of this along with thoughts and players. So as you can see, she wrote this on October the 29th, 2021. And as you can see, I highlighted right here where she says, my oldest daughter is 20 years old now. My youngest daughter is nine. So we just basically did the math on that. Then she says, but I was 20 and had been with my boyfriend for three years. That's how I was able to determine how long they were together. So I'm just I'm just basically doing math here. And then finally, in this paragraph, it reads, the boyfriend I had my first two daughters with left me. And then that's when we came to this conclusion right here of in 2003, that's when he left her. And then, of course, she goes in here and in this blog, is where she talks about the affair and it, it's right here on the Wayback Machine. So we go into that. All right, so now let's go into the next timeline of baby daddy number two. Now, now out of all the baby daddies, baby daddies number two took the most time. We spent way more time on this person than we did on Chad and Andrew. So let's go over the timeline and we will go over the receipts. So in 2004, Rachel and Brian get married. Now remember, that was just a year apart, okay? They, she, Chad left her in 2003 because she was cheating around with Brian. And so Brian was like, oh, it's okay. Let's get married. And so a year after Chad leaves her, then Brian and Rachel get married. And then a year after getting married, Rachel gives birth to her first son and her only son. And we're going to use the initials J and J. So his first name begins with a J, last name begins with with a J, so we're gonna call him JJ. And this is her third child because she had two daughters from Chad and, she, and Rachel was 25 years old. So it was important to show how old Rachel was so that she can't say, oh, I, I, had, I had all my kids when I was, you know, in my early 20s. No, that's not true, okay? So and a year after, a year after she gives birth to JJ, Brian files for separation. So this was in 2006. Six. Brian had enough of Rachel and he separated. He left her. Then Rachel turned around and filed child support. That's, I think, about a month later uh, on June the 23rd. Okay, so they filed child support and then they had a court hearing on September the 9th. And I'm going to show receipts for all of this, by the way. So on September the 9th, the judge ordered Brian to pay $2,184 for back child support payments. The monthly child support payments and garnishment will be $566 along with $50 a month until the $2,184 is paid off. So his payments will be $616 a month until the back child support for his son gets to $2,184, okay? So in other words, uh, because it was back child support payments, um, they said, well, we're going to determine that you have to pay this off. So they're going to garnish his check once a month will be $616 will be deducted from his payments, from his check. And then um, once the $2,184 back child support is completely paid off, then the payments will go down from $616 a month to $566 a month, okay? So on 2007, on April the 18th, Brian files for divorce from Rachel and she was served the next day on the 19th. So everything is happening one year after the other. They get married in 2004. Okay, she gave birth to the first son in 2005. He files for, he files for separation from her. Then Rachel files for child support that same year. And then he basically uh, has to pay for the child support and they give the monthly uh, amount. And then the following year, 2007, he files for divorce. Then this is where it gets messy. 
Are you ready? It's, it's going to get messy now. In 2009, Rachel files a temporary protection order, falsely, by the way, I may add. She falsely files a temporary protection order against Brian, and they grant it to her on September the 3rd, okay? So she is an evil person. She committed perjury and told the judge a bunch of lies about Brian, and therefore the courts did, well, the judge granted her a temporary protection order against Brian. Then the witch six days later. I mean, she's evil beyond evil. After she gets the temporary protection order falsely filed against Brian, uh, granted on the third, six days later, she files for sole custody on the ninth. But Brian was like, no, nah, girl, you ain't going to do me like that. I'm going to get my son. I love my son. So therefore, he filed an appeal. And guess what? On October the 16th, which was a month later, Matter of fact, it was like less, it was like less than three and a half weeks later. Three and a half weeks later, Brian filed, uh, gets his court date because he filed an appeal and the judge saw Rachel Lyon in the court and they dismissed the temporary protection order against Brian. So he got a big W in court for the evil things that Rachel had tried to do to him in the court system. Now we have 2011 on January the 28th, Brian Fowles for sole custody of his son who he had in his custody, by the way. And this is very important. I need you guys to understand because Andrew is going to say that he was in JJ's life ever since he was three. That is a lie because Brian was trying, was actually having JJ in his custody. And when Brian, the father, the biological father, had his own son in his custody, he started noticing certain type of behavior disorders, things of neglect. And therefore, he filed, let's go to the second one here. He, fi he went to the court. And he filed for sole custody on January the 28th. His son was five years old at the time. Then on February, about a couple of days later, Brian filed for a child protection order against Rachel on behalf of his son because he saw signs of abuse with his son and therefore was like, nah, you're not going back to that crazy woman. I'm going to keep you here, okay? So he had custody of his son at the time and that's when he filed for sole custody in reference to child protection order against Rachel so that she could not come up there to where he was living. I think it was Washington State um, and take the son back. So the hearing was held on February the 4th and unfortunately Brian was denied emergency custody because the judge did not want to separate the little boy Brian's son from his sisters and to add insult to injury on February the 7th the temporary protection order or shall I say the child protection order that uh, Brian filed on behalf of his son was also denied. And then in 2011, on October the 7th, the divorce case was officially closed. Now let's look at the receipts. In order for me to know the date that JJ was born, I had to go look in the obituary, which I have here. And as you can see, I blurred out his face. I blurred out his complete name. The only name that I left out was the name of his biological mother and biological father. By the way, I want to let you guys know, Andrew was nowhere on this page he's not listed as the biological father or the guardian so this whole thing about him raising JJ that is all false now let's go to the court cases here we have where Rachel was filing for child support against Brian if you guys want to fact check me you can do so these are public records. I am not using anything that's not public. Everything I'm telling you here is the case number right here. Look right here. This is the case number. This is out of the state of Nevada. This is the second judiciary district court. And uh, here you have the date right here. So this is when Rachel filed for child support against Brian and this is where the order was for him to pay the garnishment and the monthly payments as I stated earlier in in this uh timeline right here here is the proof in this you can just look up the case number and you'll see it right here and you'll go down and you'll see this part right here and this I just wanted to highlight that to show you that on uh September the 20th this is when the judge 
decided on how much of the child support will be given to Rachel on behalf of Brian's son. Now let's go into this case number right here. Okay. This is when Brian filed divorce. As you can see right here, he filed divorce against Rachel. Now this document is very long because they go through a lot of court battles of custody, fighting him fighting for custody. She's fighting for custody, the TPO. So if you go get this, uh, this document, you will notice a lot of details in it. So remember, if you want to look it up, it is public. You can go fact check me all you want. Here it is right here. And here is the, here is the, uh, file number and the date that they, uh, that Brian filed for divorce. And then here we have where Rachel decides to basically commit perjury and try to get a false temporary protection order, which she did. She got, she got a TPO temporarily, but Brian was able to fight against it and get it dismissed because there was no truth in the things that Rachel said in order to get the TPO against Brian. And now we have right here where Brian is fighting for custody. As you can see, this is January the 28th, 2011. And as you can see, this is where I, I also put it right here, where on January the 28th, Brian files for sole custody of his son, who was five years old at the time. And last but not least, here is the case that Brian lost. As you can see, this is a new case number because it's a new case filing. This is where he was filing for a temporary protection order on behalf of his son. You can see Brian filing against Rachel, but unfortunately, because he didn't get emergency custody of his son, that was denied. So the child protection order or the TPO on behalf of his son was also denied. So, and now let's move to the final baby daddy, Andrew Wilson. We already know his last name, so I really don't have to say Andrew W. But this is baby daddy number three, Andrew. Let's go through the timeline and then we will go over the receipts. So in 2009, Rachel gave birth out of wedlock to her fourth child with the initials SW. That is her daughter. That is the daughter daughter that belongs to Andrew. That is the, that is the first biological child that belongs to Andrew, not the first daughter that belongs to Chad, not the son that belongs to Brian, but this little girl belongs to Andrew. And by the way, Andrew was 25 years old and Rachel was 29. So Rachel is four years old older than Andrew. That doesn't sound traditional to me. Now, 2010, during the month of June, Andrew married a black woman named Taraka and they got, I got the uh, marriage uh, court filings to prove this. So it looks like Andrew was into the swirl, y'all. Okay. He loved him some chocolate. So they were married in 2010. Now, 2010, on June the 4th, Andrew parents filed for guardianship of the first daughter that Rachel had with Andrew. Ain't that some stuff? Oh my goodness. So, so here's the deal. This is what I'm guessing. By the way, what I'm about to say, I'm just guessing here. Okay. I'm just guessing. I'm thinking why Andrew was married to Taraka or Tareka. He wanted to raise the child himself did not find Rachel to be a fit mother. So he had his parents do the, um, do their dirty work. I will show you the court case. Trust me. I got the receipts, honey. So he wanted his first daughter because the second daughter wasn't born yet. And because the deputy sheriff would come over to where Rachel was living and could not serve her. This is the reason why the case got basically, I think it's got discharged. Let me read this for you for a second. So on June the 4th, Andrew's parents filed for guardianship of SW. That's the, uh, that's the fourth child. Okay. That's the third daughter, but the fourth child, the legal notices that were sent to Rachel, not Andrew, because he was married to Taraka or Tareka 
who dodged being served. She was hiding. Every time the deputy sheriffs would show up, she would go hide somewhere and tell people, I'm not here. Since the deputy sheriff couldn't serve her, the court papers, the case was discharged. Now, in 2012, during the month of February, Rachel gave birth out of wedlock again to the fifth child that has the initials B.W. So that's the fourth daughter, but the fifth child. During the month of December, guess what? Now, when I think I can't find the divorce papers because I don't know what state that Andrew and Taraka got divorced in. So I don't know if they got divorced in 2000, later in 2010 or in 2011. I'm not sure. But Andrew was able to go over there and creep up with Rachel to get her pregnant again. And that's when she had the fifth baby. And then because she had her fifth baby, her fourth daughter, February. You need to remember these dates, ladies and gentlemen. February 2012. Well, guess what? It wasn't until later on that year that they got married. So she had her baby out of wedlock, February, 2012. They didn't get married until December, 2012. Either the 27th or the 26th, I'm not so sure. And remember, I want you guys to understand because Andrew said he was raising Brian's son at the age of three. No, he wasn't. Brian's son did not get a chance to meet Andrew for the first time until the year of 2012 if I want to be charitable maybe 2011 and then Andrew was 28 and Rachel was 32 honey when they got married on December the 3rd 2015 this is when the tragedy happened Brian's son was tragically killed in a car accident he was only 10 years old and the person that was driving was a 14-year-old juvenile delinquent who stole his parents' car, and we'll talk about that later on when I show the receipts. Now, let's go to the receipts. Here we have Rachel, who does a lot of talking, and if you wanna know how it's so easy to track their past, it's because she talks a lot. She talks a lot, she writes all her business online, and that's how we were able to time track everything she has done in her life, you know, after she got out of the house of her parents and lived with Chad. So here we have it on April the 30th, 2012. This is what she tweets. My three-year-old daughter, and I basically uh, censored the daughter's name, even though she doesn't. I just want you guys, we are really looking more out for her kids than she is. So I censored out the daughter's name and she says, my three-year-old daughter, S, was pretending to be a puppy this morning. She fell on her butt and said, I hurt my tail, hashtag toddler, hashtag cute. So we just did the math right there to figure out when she, uh, what year she had her daughter. And if you look at the timetables right there, it adds all up, okay? Now, here is the court filings of the marriage between Taraka and Andrew, okay? So this is when they got married. They were married. I don't know when they got divorced. Some people are saying they got the marriage annulled. I'm not sure. Now we go to another court filings where the parents of Andrew filed for guardianship over the first daughter. Remember I was talking about this here? Okay, so this is where this coming from. This is when he was, Andrew was married to Taraka or Tareka, and then he had his parents try to get custody on behalf of Andrew. And because they couldn't serve Rachel, the case, as you can see, was disposed. And now we're gonna go to where we find out the birth of her last child, her fourth daughter, as you can see, this was tweeted out February the 20th, 2012. She had all the, these two girls. She wasn't even married to Andrew. And they have the nerve to pretend to be traditional. Do you see why we were going after them so hard? They were basically clowning women, telling women that they are that they're 304s. But look at what she she's a she's the queen 304. So here she says, Paleo baby was February 
the 18th. So, and that was in 2012. So her last baby was born February the 18th, 2012. She says a very strong, healthy, eight pound, 20 inches. Her name is, and I censored that out. Okay. And that's one thing. Hey, Rachel, I love the fact that you talk too much. You make our job easy, a little tedious, but you make it easy. And here we have her tweeting when she got married. Like I said, I don't know if they got married on the 26th or the 27th, but they definitely got married right after. Like, I guess you could say they got married about what? 10, 10 months, 10, 11 months later after she had uh, Andrew's second child out of wedlock. She got married, as you can see, the day here and her tweet, because she loves to talk, and I love the fact that she can talk, because I can track her. So here you go. I'm married to my best friend. Yay! We had a really beautiful wedding. It was like a fairy tale with falling snow. And just in case some people are like, oh, she could be just basically reminiscing. Uh, no, she's not reminiscing, because guess what? On May the 29th, Two and a half months later, she says this, I finally got my wedding pictures. So yeah, she got married the month of December. Now, whether it's the 26th or the 27th, I'm not sure, but she definitely got married on uh, in the month of December in the year 2012. And then the following year, which is two and a half months later, she finally says, I got my wedding pictures. So that this wedding just happened, okay? Like not too far after she had her second baby out of wedlock. All right, now let's get to the sad part of what's going on here is the death of her son and Brian's son. Now, here is what I want you guys to understand. Brian wanted to get custody of his son because Rachel is an unfit mother. Brian really, really fought to get custody of his son. And I believe with all my heart and soul that if he did get custody, if the judge would just think for a second and realize that this little boy would have been better off with his biological father than his crazy mother, he would still be alive today. Let me show you how Andrew tried to lie and say that this young little boy was his and he had part in, grow in uh, raising him. Check this out. Listen to this lie. And you know no. what? I just talked to your wife earlier and she gave me a picture of your dead son showing that you raised him from the age of three on up. Yeah, that's true. And I, did. I showed that. No, you didn't. Did you hear that lie? Andrew did not. Did Andrew did not even know the little boy when he was three. I need to remind you guys, okay? I need to remind you. He did not know the little boy at, at the age of three. You know why? Because Brian, his biological father, was fighting for custody of him in 2011. Remember, I want you guys to remember that Andrew was married in 2010. <laughs> so what's going on? The fact is, is that Andrew is falsely claiming some other man's child as his. He had no part in raising JJ, not at all. And by the way, let me remind you that Brian's son was five years old in 2011 when he was trying to get sole custody of him, okay? Here is the document where Brian was trying to get his son. So. The little boy wasn't even in Andrew's life. He didn't even know him. They didn't even know each other, okay? So that's what I'm saying. It's, it's like this whole thing about Andrew played a part in raising JJ is totally false. And these wedding pictures that they show, like this is Rachel giving wedding pictures to Ralph as if this proves anything. Let me tell you something. As you can see through the timeline, Rachel and Andrew got married in 2012 during the month of December. You see these pictures right here that, that basically we censored? Guess what? JJ was seven years old. Brian's son was seven years old, not three, okay? And this is the reason why I said that Rachel is a bad mother. Check out this paragraph that I got from an article that was talking about the accident. He said the two boys who were neighbors in Ravina played together quite a bit. 
However, Jeff had been grounded from playing with the older boy for a while because of some issues Ingram had. Now, by the way, let me tell you who Ingram is. Ingram is the older 14 year old boy. He has been picked up off and on by the police. He's a menace to the neighborhood. Other parents refuse to have their children play with him because he's always getting in trouble. The police are always getting involved. They're always picking him up and releasing him to the parents. So therefore, he's a bad influence on other kids. And Rachel knew this and therefore told her son, you can't play with him anymore. Listen to the rest of the sentence. But they recently started to play again. Look at that but they recently started playing again. Why would Rachel go back on what she knew what was right for her son? She knew that Ingram, the 14-year-old juvenile delinquent, was a bad influence. He was not in the best interest of her son. I guess she doesn't have any motherly instincts and therefore allowed her son, her only son, to play with a juvenile delinquent because here you have this last sentence. says right here, Actually, the night of the accident was the first night. So she told her son, you can't play with Ingram. And that was going on for several months. And all of a sudden she changed her mind. And the day that she changed her mind, Ingram stole the keys out of the garage and took the car and drove on icy roads. And that's when they slammed into a tree. And unfortunately, JJ lost his life. All because Rachel made a bad decision and allowed her son to play with a juvenile delinquent that she prevented from playing with for several months. And that's what happened. So I just want you guys to understand something right here. When Pearl tried to make it seem that Britney is the bad guy here, I want you to understand the type of people who are pretending to care about kids. They are predators. Predators are the ones who are trying to pretend like they are outraged over kids. Look at this. Pearl does not care about kids. Let's not forget this tweet, 16-year-old chicks are hotter than 26-year-old chicks, okay? I'm never going to let y'all forget that. So everybody who's pretending to be outraged over these children and don't want to sit up here and be concerned over the children, because if it was me, if I really knew where she lived, I would call CPS because Rachel is constantly on the internet. If you're so-called homeschooling your children, if you so-called cooking and cleaning why is rachel chronically on twitter okay why she's a bad person and she's a bad mother he's a bad person and he's a bad father and these people need to be investigated because as you all know things did not work out with the older two daughters and unfortunately because of Rachel's decision the young son is no longer here Rachel is chronically online Andrew is locked up into his little man cave on the internet watching corn on the cob these people are evil where there's smoke there's fire and if anybody want to prove me wrong produce the receipts i'm tired of britney and i having to prove that we're telling the truth and all these two clowns all they have to do is say na 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 boo boo that's not true no make them produce receipts or hold them accountable for the lies they have told already in addition for their actions they have displayed so far this is tree from treeoflogic.com if you like this video give it a like let me know what you think in the comment section if you're new to my channel feel free to subscribe and i'll see you guys on the next one